Hello and welcome to this video of the course Answers at Solving in Practice, where we are going to do this exercise 1D on Clark's completion and formulas of the axiomatic characterization part of the course. Now then we have here the logic program P, and the first thing we have to do is to find its Clark's completion. Then I have written here the logic program and everything's prepared there to write the Clark's completion. Then for A, we just have the fact, so we can just write A even and leave true. Now for B, we have two rules, then we will have that B even and leave not A or C and D. And then for the C, there's only this rule, then we just do the double implication and replace the comma by a conjunction. And for the D, we have now two rules. So we have to say D if I'm only if B and C or E and not A. And then for the E, we have no rules. Hence, E is going to be false in all supported models and stable models. We just write it like this. Good. Then the next step is to find the positive dependency graph, GP, then the loops and the loop formulas. Then let's come to here. So we have C if A. We have nothing here and here, D, B, and D, C. We can write it there, and then we have from the C to the B and from the D to the B. Okay, so from, from C to B we have here, and from D to B we have this other edge in the other direction. And then we also have here from E to D that we can write down here. Okay, so let's check this. So we will not get any edge from here, any edge from there, any edge from there, or any edge from there. And then we should have C if A from B to D and from C to D and from E to D and from C to B and from D to B also, right? So everything. what we can also do here is count how many edges we should have. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then we have one, two, three, four, five, six. I mean, this exercise is very simple, so maybe you don't need to do that many checks, but just in case I do this. Okay, and then we can write here this more mathematically. So the graph has the nodes uh, A, B, C, D, and E. And then it has the edges A to C, B to D, C to D, C to B, D to B, and E to D. Okay, good. Then let's continue. And, uh, okay, I have to close here, the parentheses, this is just a graph. Now let's look for the loops. For, from the A, I, there's no way I can go back. I could go if there was an edge here, but there is not. From the C, I can go to others, but then there's no way to go back. Then similarly from the E, but from the D, I can go to the B and then come back. And then, of course, the same happens with the D, with the B, sorry. So then this is a loop D, D. Let's write it here. We have BD. And there we have to write the loop formula, which is just the, we have to write the formula for BD. Then for BD, we have these two rules. And this uses the B, and this uses the D. So these two are the external support, right? Because those are the rules that can give us B or D without using them, right? This one uses the D, this one uses the B. So then what we know is that if either B or D hold, then one of these two must hold, right? One, either this 
or this body is hot. Sorry, it's the body that must hold. So if I the P of the hole the holes, one of these bodies must hold because if this wouldn't hold, then the only way of getting D would be using the using the B, and the only way of getting B would be using the D. Hence, there is no way that we can have any of them, right? Because there's no way to prove them without them. Hence, we can write this here. If B or D, then either we have the support from node A or we have the support from E and not A, right? Or uh, I'll, I'll just, if you we write it in, in the other direction, if we have A and we have either not E or A, then we must have not B and not D, right? So if both the bodies are false, because this is the case, then both B and D must be false. Okay, let's continue without this that we don't need. And uh, so we can move on. And now the next step is to find the support, right? The next, so we have done this part on positive dependency graph loops and loop formulas. Now we have to find the models of the completion that are called the supported models. And for this, we are going to do some search here. So let's see what we know right away is that A, a must be true because this part of the equivalence is going to be true. So then this has to be also true. And similarly, given that this part of the equivalence is going to be false, this has to be false. Hence, E is going to be false. Okay, then let's see what we get from this. So with the A, this is never going to hold. This is never going to hold. Oh, sorry, no, good. So this is true. So, and this is also true, hence we can derive the C. Let me write that we do not have the A like this and that we will have the A. Hence, we can derive the C also. And with the C, this is true. And then if we go now to check the equivalence for the D, we have that this part doesn't hold because we have, we have no T and we also have A, so none of the conjuncts hold. And for this part, we have the C. So now we are left basically with saying that if B holds, then, sorry, if B holds, then D must hold. And also the other way around, if we, we should have the, if D, we should have the B. Sorry for that. And similarly here, right? So basically what we have on those two sides is just an equivalence between D and B. So then what we could say right away is that given that they are equivalent, we must have either both, both false or both true. But just to make things simpler, let's now reason by cases and say, okay, at this point, we know um, that these three must be true, false, and true. But now about uh, B and D, let's reason by cases. So let's see what would happen if B was false or if B was true. So if B is false, then this part here becomes false, hence this must also be false. So D must be false. And then this is satisfied here because this part becomes false. So the whole right side becomes false, hence this would also be false. And then we are fine. We are fine means that this satisfies this equivalent. And then if we go to the right branch, we have that if we have B, then this part becomes true, hence this must become true, we must have the D. And similarly, if we did it here, given that this part is true, then, sorry, given that this part is true because B is true, this part must also be true, and for that the D must hold. Good. And now just once again, we could check this, just uh, that all rules are satisfied, just to, to, to be sure. So, this part is false, and this part is false. Good, because we are making the E false. So let's let's first look on the left side. So this part is false, and this part is also false because we have not D, and this part is also false because we have not D, right? Now, this part is true because we have A and not D, and this part, other part is true because C is true. And on this side, this doesn't hold, and this also doesn't hold because C is false, so this part is false, and this also part of the equivalence is false because we have not B, so then the equivalence is satisfied, and here we have A true, so then we are good. And if we come to the other side, 
Then we have the same, this is satisfied, this is satisfied, and this is satisfied. We have already checked them. And then we just have to also check these two ones. And in this case, this part is true because we have B and C and we have the B here. And similarly here, C and D are true. So this part of the equivalent, the right part is true and the left part is also true. Hence the equivalence is satisfied. Good, so then we know these two are the supported models of the program, simply A, C and A, B, C, D. And to check whether they are stable, we have just have to, so remember the stable models are the supported models that satisfy the loop formulas. Can we just have to check for each of these whether they satisfy the loop formula. So A and C satisfy the loop formula because the antecedent of the implication doesn't hold, hence the whole formula holds. So we have that AC is an stable model. But with A, B, C, D, we have that we have B or D, but we do not have not A and we do not have E and not A, right? Because actually we have A and we have not E. Hence, this supported model does not satisfy the loop formula, hence it's not a stable model, and the unique stable model is AC, right? And uh, yes, and this is right, because remember what we said before here is that for B or D to hold, it must be the case that either this body holds or this other body holds, but this uh, supported model does not satisfy any of, of these models, okay? And it's important that once you get the result, you go and have a look at the program to see whether what you obtain makes sense because it's possible that you make small mistakes and it makes sense that you try some methods to, to find those mistakes that you could have had. And also another test you could do is when you have the stable model to go and check, you could also just try to find the stable model looking at the logic program. And here we could say, let's do it here. Maybe you don't need it, but I do it just in case and because I like it. So I derive the A from here. There's no rule that can give me the E. So from here, I can get the C. Then I satisfy this here. Then nothing can happen here because I already have the A. Similarly, this goes away. And then I just have uh, okay, the C is true, so basically now I'm left with this true where the B depends on the D and the D depends on the B. And here I know that I cannot get anything because there's no way that I could prove B or D without using them. Hence, we are left just with the stable model that contains A and C, right? And this reasoning that I have done now saying that given that these are the only two rules for for B and D, I know I cannot get them. It's what is encoded here saying that to have B or D, one of these two bodies must hold. So if I don't have any of them, then both B and D are false. Right? Good. Very nice. So this was all for this exercise. I hope you understood it, you enjoyed it, and then see you in another video. Ciao!